Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly installment of Minx Monday Q&A. So let's get started with the very first question uh, from Lindsay Braxton. She has two questions. Uh, number one, what is the most disappointing handbag purchase you've ever made and why was it so disappointing? Um, I th At first I thought I was going to say the Louis Vuitton croissant bag, but I think I'm actually going to have to say all of the coach bags that I purchased. Um, in the beginning, uh, I was very much so in love with coach and I got a little carried away and I started buying like there was no tomorrow. And uh, what actually ended up happening is when I started to sell them off in order to support this habit back here, uh, if I bought a bag for three, four hundred dollars, I'd end up selling it for fifty, sixty, seventy dollars. So I was losing so, so much money. I didn't really I wasn't thinking of resale value. I was just thinking in the moment, oh, I want to buy all these bags. I want I want to get this bag. I want to get that bag. So um, I just have to say, I don't regret it in a sense that I wish it never happened because had it not been for coach, I sometimes I consider it the gateway drug. <laughs> uh, I would have never been able to get the collection that I have behind me and really be passionate about this collection. Uh, I just think that I wish I would have been a little bit more savvy as to which ones I chose and why. That way, when I did sell them, it would probably make, I'd make a little bit more money you know, from, from what I originally paid for them. So instead of selling them for 50, 60 bucks, maybe trying to sell them for 125, $150. So not so much a regret, just, I just, uh, I, yeah, I can't call it a regret. No, I can't regret that. But I just, I wish I would have been a little savvier. It's the, is the ticket. Uh, just disappointing because I wish I would have made a little bit more money off of, uh, off the bags or not money off of them. Just gotten, some more of my money back. Uh, okay. Number two, what are some great pop of colors to have a spring summer handbags, but aren't loud like lime green? Uh, this is a very good question. I think that for spring and summer handbags, I think it's a time to be extremely fun and adventurous. Uh, if you, obviously you guys can tell from my collection, well, you can't really tell in the dust bags, but I tend to have black, brown, uh, very light colored handbags. I don't really like to venture too much out into very, you know, vibrant colors. <clears throat> so I think if you were to add any, any type of pop of color versus the normal, neutral colors that you carry would be a good idea. Uh, and I know what you mean. You don't want to have the obnoxious, you know, neon pink, neon, neon lime green, like you said. Uh, I think a really, really good color, even though I'm, I'm really not one for the color, but I, I think when I see it, I absolutely love it is turquoise. I think it is a very, it's not, su it's subtle, but it's not too subtle to the point that you can't really see it from afar. Uh, the new Louis Vuitton B collection, that turquoise that came out, I forget the, the name of it, but that is a beautiful, beautiful color for Alma's, the, the Vernie Alma that it came in. And I think it adds just the right amount of color to any outfit, uh, especially if you're wearing gold tone hardware. I just think it looks good. Uh, another one I'd have to say maybe... I think, honestly, it could be any color that you're not used to wearing. If you have a black handbag and you have black accessories and you add a pop of pink, red, blue, whatever color it is, I think it's going to really make a statement in your handbag or in your outfit or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. So um, out of everything, I'd have to say that that turquoise is beautiful. Uh, like I said, it's not a color for me, but I think when I do see it, it is jaw droppingly gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I think as long as you add any, any pop, any, any pop could be anything according to whatever your style is. So I say go with maybe a little bit, <laughs> not so obnoxious colors, <laughs> kind of like what I'm wearing <laughs> on my, on my fingernails right now, which is a very neon pink, but you guys know I'm obsessed with pink. So that's, I think that's the best way that I could answer it. <laughs> Hopefully it made sense. Uh, okay. Shop girl, when you use loving my bags, leather conditioner on Viketa, what does it do? Does it, pre does it prevent it from patina? Um, I do not use loving my bags. I have no idea. Um, because I don't treat any of my handbags. However, I can tell you that the best way that I can describe loving my bags, and there's a lot of people out there that absolutely love this product. Um, I guess you could say it's more of a, I think from the, their, their words exactly, 
was it's a it's a mini spa for your handbag. If you have a very dry, damaged um, handbag with leather handles or whatever it is that's leather, they will pretty much, in a sense, rejuvenate that leather, bring it back to life, make it look very fresh, very, um, very soft instead of having that dry, damaged look. So, uh, and I did add a few things on here. I don't know if it prevents patina necessarily. I know there's a few other products out there that do prevent patina, but as far as loving my bags, it's pretty much what it is. It's a great company that really is passionate about handbags and wanting to bring them back to life and making you proud of the handbag that you're carrying instead of looking at it and saying, Ooh, it's a little beta. <laughs> but um, I personally don't use it, but I have heard so many wonderful stories, so many wonderful, uh, so much wonderful feedback from that company. So uh, I'd say try it out. It will definitely bring your, your handbag back to life. Uh, okay, uh, Maddie Shops, what are your thoughts on the Montaigne Empreinte or Canvas? Ooh, this is a good question. Uh, when I was at Louis Vuitton earlier, the, or last week, I looked at the Montaigne and Canvas, uh, and, I, and my, I like it. I don't even know <laughs> what I'm trying to say. I like it, but when I saw the Empreinte, oh my goodness, I absolutely love that bag. Uh, I thought that it would be a little bit too heavy because it is an all leather bag with the textile lining on the inside, but it was not. It was it was strangely lightweight, and it was absolutely gorgeous. I saw it in the in the noir emprunt, and I could not stop thinking about it. <laughs> and um, I think I went for the. I looked at the larger size. I looked at all the sizes. I prefer the larger size. Uh, I think that the medium is a little too small for my taste, uh, but it's. Oh my goodness, gorgeous. It is a gorgeous bag. And I think it's a $300 difference between the larger one and the medium one. So at that at that price point, I would always go for the larger because you get more leather, you get more everything. But then again, it's always up to whatever your lifestyle uh, needs. But I'd have to say on prompt. It is, oh my goodness, gorgeous. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Joan Megger. Uh, if I buy a pre-loved Chanel handbag, can I take it into a Chanel store to get to get it cleaned and refreshed. Um, you know what? I do think you can do that as long as it has the serial code on there. I know sometimes uh, I have heard some essays say that they prefer if the person had the card of uh, the authenticity card. Uh, but as far as knowing exactly, I do not know. I apologize. Uh, but I know that it is quite costly, but they can pretty much make your handbag look brand new. There are some things that they can't do. So I think the best thing to do is to actually take the handbag into the boutique and ask for um, either a quote or for their opinion, because some things they cannot uh, bring back to life. There's some things that they cannot fix. So it's always a case by case scenario, but I do believe that you can do that. Um, okay. Um, Miss Tay Young Park. Miss Day Young Park. I decided to get my first two LVs. I, congratulations. <laughs> Trust me, deciding is half the battle. <laughs> I really like the artsy and the Neverfull. Great choice. Uh, I like the classic LV print, but I don't like the Vaquetta after it gets too dark. So I will eventually repair all leather parts. Which bag do you think is better to do so? Um, hmm. I think from what I was reading up and a few of my girlfriends have actually had theirs done, because the Artsy has very limited vaquetta, it's only the handle that it has plus the little um, tassel that it comes with versus the Neverfull has the lining around the outside, the leather handles, and the little straps. I do believe the Artsy is a little bit less expensive to repair as far as leather parts go. Uh, we're talking anywhere in the range. I don't know. I don't work for Louis Vuitton. I I would just have to guess <laughs> um, from what I had read. I believe it's anywhere from two, the, the handle for the artsy is anywhere from 225 to 265, I believe. And uh, the Neverfull was 250 to 300. So obviously the artsy is a little bit less expensive. So if I was to do that, I would go for the artsy if you, if that's how you feel about um, replacing the, uh, the leather on the handbag. Uh, okay, Ben Laurie, I'm debating between the toiletry pouch 26 and pochette accessoire and M. I would like one to use for my makeup travel, my makeup travel and as a clutch when I don't want to use a big bag. Um, I, 
Even though I like the fact that the pochette accessoire comes with a little strap that you can wear on your shoulder, I honestly think that the toiletry pouch is the best way to go because it does have the washable uh, lining on the inside. So if you were to ever spill your makeup, if anything were to happen in there, you could just wipe it off and you don't have to worry about it getting uh, ingrained or not ingrained, uh, getting into the textile lining. Plus, that's how I rock my toiletry pouch 26. I think it looks great as a clutch, uh, especially if you're going out to dinner or just maybe a, a an event that you want to wear something a little bit more chic. Uh, if I was to carry it all day, I think I did that a few times. And by the end of the day, I was like, oh my goodness, get this thing out of here because it was starting to get heavy and it was just not very very fun to keep holding it under my arm like so or like this. Uh, so I would have to go with the toiletry pouch 26 out of the two uh, because I do believe it has a little bit more versatility than the Pusha Accessoire NM. Uh, okay. Um, you've Quinn, I'm so sorry. What do you think of the Pouchette Matisse? I've been wanting this bag for months, but the piece is a little bit too expensive for me for a canvas bag. Do you think it's worth it? Well, <laughs> I don't know if you saw my unboxing, but I myself picked up the Pouchette Matisse. <laughs> uh, and you know what? I agree. It is a little bit on the pricier side for a canvas bag. I know I draw the line at 2000 or right under 2000 because that's just, that's just how I am. <laughs> uh, but I do have to say that I did think a lot about this purchase. Uh, I kept reading up on reviews. I kept reading up on things and whatnot. And I have to say that it does have quite a bit of versatility. Uh, it's not just a little, a little handbag just because it does look very small. It's not a little handbag. It actually fits so much. You can wear it crossbody. You can wear it on your shoulder. Plus, it has um, just the right amount of the Keta. I know. I know. <laughs> and I really like the interior. I like the fact that you have so many different pockets that you can... Um, you can utilize. Plus it has the microfiber lining. So there are some positives to it. Uh, usually if a canvas bag has a textile lining and it's still in the $2,000 price range, that is a major, major no for me. I have to make sure that it has something a little bit more luxurious. And in this case, it would be the microfiber lining. Uh, so I honestly think, uh, it's a, so far, it's a great bag. I don't know. We'll see what happens when, when I've used it for about a week or a week and a half. I will give you guys an honest review because that's just how I roll. <laughs> uh, and um, I so far, I've heard nothing but good things about this bag. And some people I have heard say, oh, it's really small. It doesn't fit anything. But it actually fits so much in there. I have everything in there except for my cosmetic case, which if I wanted to, I could fit it in there without a problem. And I just have to have a smaller uh, wallet. So I will be doing a what's in my, uh, what fits in my Pouchette Matisse to give you guys a little bit more of a better visual. Uh, okay. Next one, Melissa Bailey. I'm hoping to purchase a Speedy in Azure and was wondering if you can give me tips on keeping the Vaquetta looking brand new. Ooh, a Speedy in Azure. <laughs> one of my favorites. Um, the best way that I can do it, I, obviously you can use, uh, you know, lo I'm not loving my bags, but there's a few other different uh companies that you can use to try to keep the Vaquetta looking fresh. But if you want to go the au naturel route, I would just have to say, make sure that you are very careful as um, as when you wear, as when you wear, when you do wear lotions, uh, perfumes, anything like that, make sure that you put your lotion on and then wait a little while to hold the bag. Uh, if you're in a very humid place, that will definitely affect the patina and as well as water, any water, if you get caught in a in a summer thunderstorm. I don't know. You never know. Uh, just be very careful on that and uh, you should be okay. But I will tell you what the sales associate told me at Louis Vuitton on the Champs-Élysées. She said that if you were to put the, any kind of bag that it is, whether it's Azure, Monogram or whatever it is that has a uh, Vaquetta, let it sit out uh, in an open area. It doesn't have to have direct sunlight, kind of like what I have. My windows are closed. Well, one of them is. And uh, just set it down uh, for three days. And that way it'll start to get a little bit of a base patina on its own without it looking like it's already dark. So it might look like it's still brand new, but it already has that base patina that you need in order to be able to get more of a uniform uh, look to it. So that's what I would suggest. 
Um, okay. Ashley Aceves. Uh, I'm seven months pregnant and I'm excited to get, first of all, congratulations. And I'm excited to get a diaper bag. I want a Demi Ben Neverfull. Not sure if I should get the MM or the GM. I'm 5'2 and 110 pounds when not pregnant. Uh, I will be using it as a diaper bag slash purse for the next several years. Which one? Um, it really is all a matter of preference. Uh, the MM size in my opinion, is the perfect size, uh, especially if you're looking on later on down, you know, down the road. <laughs> uh, if you were to carry maybe some of their toys or something like that, you still have plenty of room in the MM size. I think the GM is a little too big for my taste. But then again, I have met uh, people that are maybe five foot, five foot one, and they have a GM and they just, and they just cinch it in. So it's really all a matter of preference. Uh, but in my personal opinion, I would go for the MM because later on when they do end up getting, uh, when they are a little bit older, you can just rock that bag and you don't have to worry about it looking like a diaper bag or anything like that. Uh, so it's like I said, it's all a matter of preference, sweetheart. So I just go to the store, try them out and see, see what feels right. Who knows? The GM might feel fabulous to you. Uh, okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Unique today. If you had to choose between the Speedy and Demi Azor over the Neverfull and Demi Azor, ah, <laughs> what would the reasons be? Um, oh man, both of them are gorgeous bags. I would have to pick the Neverfull over the Speedy in Demi Azor, uh, because in the summertime, uh, you guys know the, the Neverfull Demi Azor is my go-to bag. I use that bag more than anything. Uh, well, I have in the previous years, who knows, maybe this year I'll be wearing something else. But the reason why I always choose the Neverfull over the Speedy, uh, for summer is because I want to be hands-free, especially if I'm adding, uh, SPF or if I, am. Um, if I'm shopping or if I'm wearing a really light dress, I don't really want to carry anything uh, in my hand because you guys know I don't have the bandolier speedy. I just have the classic speedy. So it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to shop around, go to the beach, do stuff like that. If I just have a tote on my, on my shoulder without having to worry about holding something here. And then uh, obviously in the summertime you sweat. So if I'm sweating and uh, especially if we go down to the beach, and I have it in the crook of my arm, I can just imagine how dark the Vaqueta will look at the end of summertime because obviously you can't help it with sweat. You can't help it with any of the lotions that you're wearing so that you don't get sunburnt and stuff like that. So for that reason, I would pick the Neverfull. Um, okay. All right. Ariel Sanchez, how do you prevent slouching on the GST? Uh, you know what? I think the best way to prevent the slouching is actually storage. It's the way that you store it. Uh, I usually fill mine completely with air paper and, um, when I do have it in use, I like to make sure that both pockets that are on the GST have somewhat of a similar weight ratio to both of them excuse me, I don't want something too light on one side and too heavy on the other. And I will be definitely going into more detail on that when I do a storage video, which I think will be uh, later this month. Uh, okay. Miss Dosti, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am obsessed with Demi Azor and I would love to add a piece to my collection. I am a proud mom to a Speedy B35 and Demi I Ben, a Speedy B25 and Infinity on Prant, and a Neverfull GM and Demi Aben. I cannot decide between the Speedy B30 or the Totally MM. Um, hmm, this is a good question. So you have two Speedy Bs and a Neverfull. So you already have something similar to a Tote, uh, like the Totally. You know what? I would have to say out of the two, it seems as though you already like uh, the style of the Speedy B, uh, and I believe from what you said, um, you are a real mom to a real uh, to a four year old, and you want to make sure that you're hands free. So for that reason and that reason only, I would pick the Speedy B uh, thirty because you already know how it wears. You uh, you like it. You already have a thirty five and a twenty five, and you are one hundred percent able to be hands free. And in the event that you don't want to be hands free, you can change it by taking off the bandolier strap and carrying it as a classic Speedy. Uh, I do think you'll get a lot more use out of it. Nothing against the totally, but um, some people have said that because it is a double handle handbag. Sometimes one handle tends to roll off. I don't know about you, but that drives me absolutely crazy. 
Sometimes I have to overlap the strap onto the other one so that it doesn't do that. And with the Speedy B, you don't have to worry about that. You, all, all you're doing is pretty much just throwing it on as a crossbody or on your shoulder and you're done. So for that reason and that reason alone, I say the Speedy B 30. Uh, okay. Shraddha Shrad B. I'm sorry. What are your thoughts on the LV Retiro NM? Should I go for it in the good old Vaquetta or black leather trimmings with mono? Uh, you know what? I actually prefer it with the black leather. I think it really adds a different uh, style to it. It adds a different look to it. Um, so yeah, definitely. Heck yeah. Go for the black leather. I think it looks great. Uh, okay, Wendy Starks. Just wondering how you feel about Fendi bags. Have you ever considered Fendi bags? Why or why not? Um, I have had Fendi bags. I'm really, I have no real opinion on them, I guess. I, I do like the, uh, the Fendi to is it toujours? I really think it's a, it's, it has a nice silhouette, but, uh, they're just not for me. There is nothing, I haven't seen a Fendi bag that really, really captures my attention, um, but I can appreciate them. Obviously, the brand has been around for a long, long time, but it's just nothing. It's not something for me. No. Um, who knows? Maybe in the future they will be. <laughs> uh, okay. Tara Harders. Uh, what bag should I get between the Speedy 30 and the Favor MM, both in monogram? Um... Well, uh, like I told you guys when I did the unboxing for the Pochette Matisse, I actually went with the intention to purchase the favorite, but I found it to be too short. Um, it just landed right above, actually right below my chest. Uh, so every time I'd open up the flap, it just didn't, I don't know, it didn't look right. It is a little bit larger than the Eva Clutch. I do believe it is 11.8 inches in length and the Eva is 9.8. Um, but I, think I, I could be mistaken, but it is a little bit bigger and, uh, I think it's, I, I still think it's a beautiful bag. I really like it. There is one thing that did drive me crazy while I was at the boutique trying it out is the fact that on the back side you can see the stitching. So it almost looks like the bag is not, com it wasn't completed. So that just kind of started <laughs> make, make me question the bag a little bit. I didn't, I didn't understand why they would leave the stitching the way that it does. I understand they have a, it has a pocket on the inside. I understand that 100%, but it's just not very flattering to the backside of the bag. And I know some people say, well, it doesn't matter. It's on the backside. It is on the backside, but I know it's there. So for that reason, I would go for the Speedy 30. Um, but the favor, the favor MM does have a little bit more versatility because you can carry it so many different ways. So versatility, um, I'd say the favorite, or if you want to go with a classic, you cannot go wrong with the Speedy. Uh, okay. Uh, Simon Christensen. I want to buy my first luxury purchase. Ah, congrats. I want to buy a wallet. Should I get the billfold or the card holder or a card holder? Um, you know what? I'd have to say the card holder, especially if you go through uh, the Louis Vuitton card holder. Uh, I think it's a great... Uh, I can't even talk. My goodness. It is a great entry uh, piece. You really get to interact with... Um, with the, with the card holder. And if you decide to get Epi or if you got canvas, you can really get a feel for the canvas or the leather or whatever it is that you want to purchase. But I think it's very slim. It's very chic. It's not too much. And therefore I think that the card holder would look best in my opinion. Uh, okay. Uh, DV Lux. I can't, decide between the Pochette Matisse or the Montaigne MM in monogram as my first piece? Ooh, another tough question. <laughs> um, you know what? Between the Matisse and the Montaigne MM in monogram. Okay. So even though I have the Pochette Matisse and I, and I really like the bag, I don't prefer the Montaigne in the monogram. However, it is a full size bag. It is a bigger bag. It comes with a shoulder strap, so it does have versatility. And uh, it has the Keta. It has the canvas. It has the lining on the inside. I think it is a great bag. So between the two, because it is your first, you said it's your first piece, uh, I think I would want a, a full-size bag to be my first piece. Um, 
just so I can really get a feel for the, for the brand. Um, I know sometimes I say to go with the smaller bags, but out of those two, oh man, I don't know. It's a tough decision. The Pochette Matisse, like I told you guys, it is smaller. It's a, considered a crossbody bag, but it fits as much as a full size bag. Um, so, uh, oh man, now I'm confusing myself. <laughs> I think it, if it were me, what would I do? I would honestly come to the price. It would come to the price and what it is that I needed because both can both can be crossbody bags, to, in a sense, or a shoulder bag for the Montaigne. Both of them are canvas. Both of them are monogram. So it would have to come down to price. How much do you want to spend on your first bag? That is definitely what I would go with um, my gut instinct first. Maybe there's if there's something that really attra you're attracted to as far as the Pochette Matisse. Is it the hardware? Is it uh, something that Mon the Montaigne does not have? I would go for that one. Always, always, always. And I know this is the hardest part. The hardest part is actually deciding which bag you want your first one to be. It's, it's, any one of us will tell you it is the worst <laughs> because you're sitting there, you're, you're contemplating, you go <laughs> contemplating, you go between the negative and the positive a million times and none of them make sense. So, um, maybe is it the, maybe you could look at the price tag. Maybe if that's something that you, uh, do you not want to spend that much on a bag for you to, for your, to be your first uh, choice, or um, if money is not an issue, then it all goes on how it looks on you. Uh, if you're at the boutique and you go there and you're there for three, four hours, who cares? You're there. You make sure you feel good when you walk out of that store. So I honestly, I wish I could answer it for you, but I am actually at a loss for, uh, for preference on either one or the other. It's all you. It is all you, doll. <laughs> uh, okay, and I do have two more, um, two more questions. One question I don't remember who asked me. I apologize. I thought I wrote it down, but I I couldn't find it. But the person had asked me if um, if bags patina even if they're in their dust bags in an open area, kind of like what I have here. What you guys can see is to my left, I have a full size uh, window. And then to my, in front of me, I have a, uh, another window as well. And for the most part, I have blinds and I leave the blinds down so that I don't have sunlight coming in here all the time, but it does happen at times. And it, <laughs> I mean, the sun's going to shine through here no matter what. And I have had instances where my Speedy 30 and Demi Azur and my Galliera uh, and Demi Azur, both of them had um, patina. They're both of them had the vaquetta start to patina in the dust bags without me using them. Uh, and that's another thing that I told you guys, I will cover when it comes to the storage video because there's so much that I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, but just be careful. Um, make sure if you can try to lay the hand or the, um, the, the if you have a drawstring hand bag or a, my goodness, dust bag, try to make sure that the opening is on the other side, the opposite side, not facing the sun. Um, and it's, it will happen if, especially if they're just sitting there because it is leather and it is going to breathe. So Yes, it'll happen unless you leave it in a dark closet somewhere. <laughs> uh, okay, and I do have one last question. Uh, Rosalina, and what I did is I kind of cut it down a little bit um, just to not to make it so long, but uh, this is what she said. Nicholas Gisquier built up the Balenciaga aesthetic. I know you're not a fan of Balenciaga, but can appreciate them. Yes, I can. Did you consider how LV's aesthetic will be influenced and whether you're a fan of Louis Vuitton, regardless of the style it's taking, as opposed to not being a fan of Balenciaga, or if you would be less of a fan of Louis Vuitton of the design and the aesthetic, it starts to change. Are you loyal to LV regardless? Um, this is a very great question. I absolutely love Louis Vuitton. I have had, I have been in love with Louis Vuitton for a very long time. Uh, however, I do, and I did write some notes on here. Um, I do like the fact that Louis Vuitton has come up with classic styles that have been around for a very long time. And we are still seeing some of those bags today. The Alma bag has been around for a very, very long time. And we have had uh, more than one creative uh, director before it used to be Marc Jacobs. Now it is Nicolas Gisquier. Uh, and I think what it comes down to is whether I think that they're going to incorporate some of their style into the handbags. Uh, but if they start to take the, 
if they start to take the company in a different direction, I think all of us will notice it. Uh, I think Nicholas Gisquier is doing a really, really great job of broadening the spectrum of Louis Vuitton, of opening us to a different style of handbags, a different style, a different way of seeing a handbag. Uh, it's something that, uh, obviously Louis Vuitton is a very successful company company. It's not like it needs someone to try to revamp them, but the fact that Nicholas Gisquier has been able to pretty much bring it up to the, to another level is, is, I mean, that is major. And I think that, uh, they will still stay in the same realm as far as classic Louis Vuitton goes, uh, because it is not Nicholas Gisquier's company. It is obviously Louis Vuitton. So they still have to make sure that they're all on board with what it is that he is bringing to the table. And, uh, I don't think that they will be able to, um, to, to lose sight of what Louis Vuitton really means, what kind of an impact it brings to to this, this whole world, uh, because obviously it is a world renowned, um, brand. Everyone knows what it is. Everyone knows what it means. And, uh, I don't, I don't foresee them changing to the point where you don't even recognize the brand anymore. And I think if that were to happen, uh, I think the, uh, I think the head honchos would, <laughs> would realize that and they would pull back the reins a little bit. So, uh, no, I, I think, um, what else did I write on here? Uh, I don't foresee him changing a brand so much that, that it's following will, will fall out of love. That's what I wrote on there. Uh, because there is a major following, obviously all of us Louis Vuitton addicts. There are a few bags that Nicholas Gisquier has brought out that I am not a fan of, but there's a few other people that are okay with them. Uh, a few sales associates have told me that there's a few bags that he has brought out that they thought that they, I mean, people would be lining up the door for them and they, and they haven't. So it's all a test of time. It's all a matter of what we end up purchasing because he might think they're great. He might think they're wonderful, but it all comes down to the consumer. And if the consumer is not purchasing what it is he's putting out there, then I don't foresee them pushing, pushing and pushing to have a different aesthetic. So Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, very great questions from all of you guys. Thank you guys so, so much. I had a blast doing this. Um, I'm at 31 minutes. I'll be closer to 32. Uh, but this week I have, um, I think I'm going to do my luggage tag collection video and the how to. I'm going to see how I exactly can film it so you can see how to, uh, how to put it onto your bags. Uh, and then I am also going to be doing the Mon Mono review uh, on my Speedy 30. Cause I know I've had a lot of you guys ask me, is it worth it? What should I do? How does it age and how does it work? So I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Um, when I do the review, but anyways, that is all I have for you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me for 32 minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day. You guys.